standing here in Long Beach after a, a, a verdict was issued, which was justice much delayed, but yet it's justice well deserved. Um, to my immediate right is this beautiful building, which was the first building of a Seacoin project which began in the 80s, which was going to beautify the city of Long Beach, it was going to reduce taxes, and it was going to be the envy of every single developer who's ever built a building in the city of Long Beach. What happened after that is nothing short of a catastrophe, and most people would have abandoned the project like so many have in the city of Long Beach. But not this particular person, because this wasn't your typical developer. This is a man, Sinclair Haven, who grew up here in the city of New York, who played on this very land that his family has owned for many years. It was his dream to beautify this city and build buildings that everyone would come to live in. And that was stopped by the city of Lloyd Long Beach. It was done with no other motive than politics. Because the city of Long Beach entered into an agreement with Sinclair Haberman after he got all of the variances and permits to begin building this beautiful structure in which you can see one of the buildings that were built and you can see the design there would have been pools for the remaining buildings that are here. And they stopped him. They stopped him and he had to go to court. And they entered into a contract. And Sinclair Haven, he had burned him twice. Had that contract so ordered by the Supreme Court. And that, co that contract from 1989, which was breached and resulted in this lawsuit, gave him the right the construction of the entire project as permitted in accordance with the terms and conditions of the Board, the board of Zoning Appeals of the City of Long Beach. And it agreed further that no action, no action would be taken by any of the parties or any other agency of the City of Long Beach to enforce any current zoning regulations or any amendments thereto currently under consideration or here and after to be enacted, which would in any manner be in conflict or contravene the terms of this stipulation. So what happened? Sinclair Haberman, in good faith, did that. The city of Long Beach, in that time, in good faith, did that. And then when it came time to build the Zone of Boarding Appeals, in conjunction with the owners of this building now, Xander Building, Pulled the permits and revoked the variances and said to Sinclair Haberman, you cannot build this project. You cannot do it anymore. And most people, like so many others along this strip, would have abandoned it. This is his land. This is where he played with his brother growing up. This is where his family wants to make a statement on what Long Beach can be, even in the future. And he, he persevered in court. And he went to court. And he realized that all he wanted to do was build this building. So he entered into another agreement with the city of Long Beach. Even after they did all of this to him, it would have cost the taxpayers not one dollar, not one cent. Let me build my buildings. Wouldn't be done. They, couldn't, they wouldn't do it. So the court fight continued. The city of Long Beach was so wrong, and there's no answer to this contract that they entered into. They defaulted in the lawsuit. Now, you would think that any municipality who defaulted in a lawsuit would immediately settle with the plaintiff. They chose not to. They fought frivolously in court over and over again. They went to the appellate division and the court of appeals and back. All, at all times, losing, losing, losing. Delaying, delaying, delaying. Why? Because they didn't want it to affect the next election. That's not in the interest of the taxpayers of the city of Long Beach. I understand it if you're elected officially, you're like, oh, I don't want to pay this money because the election's coming up. How far can you kick the can? Well, the can stopped yesterday. So to most people, you say, $131 million is a lot of money. And you'd be right. But in this case, 
it's all the city of Long Beach's fault. 100% their fault. Because it's interest. This is interest that's compounded annually over the years. That's taxpayers' money. This is all the city and the people who have run this city for the last 31 years. Well, not the current administration. I'm not blaming the people who just got elected. That would not be fair to them. But the people who grew up here. Look at what Xander did. Xander decided, once this building was built, they decided that they liked the views. So they went and they said, well, Mr. Haberman, you don't own this property next door anymore. We do. And they lost that case. And they had to settle that case for $23 million. But that's what they did for six and a half years of their problem. The city of Long Beach has gone on for 50 15 years, 15 years on land that's very valuable that they believe they could just say, eh, he'll go away sooner or later like so many others. But when you grow up here and your family's from here and everything you have done has been done to beautify the city of Long Beach, you don't go away. And what's his goal today? His goal is to finish this project build this building, make Long Beach what it should be and what it could be. It's still his goal. Because why? He grew up here. Any questions from the press? When you talk about politics, um, and they didn't want to get wrapped up in what? The litigation, the $50 million per year, or or they did not, they were listening to... Uh, people that lived right here and said, we don't want any more buildings because it's an eyesore. Well, you'd have to ask the people who are no longer in office over the years since this has gone on so much. But you got you have to understand the mentality here. Even if you settled the case for what it was worth, which is a fraction of what this verdict is, someone, their opponent, would say, oh, look what happened here in the city, and they would be afraid they'd likely lose. That's not good government. That's not government at all, actually. You have to do what's best for the city and admit when you're wrong. And they would never do that, even after they defaulted. They never offered one dollar to this man. They never sat at a table and offered him one dollar. What arrogance is there? Did they think he was going to go away? And at the percentage and at the interest that they were paying. And now, what's going to happen? Because remember, we leave here today. What happens tomorrow? It's likely this arrogance is going to continue. And they're going to appeal this verdict. And when they appeal this verdict, you're talking about interest now. About a million dollars a month. All during this appeal. Can you imagine that? How is that the benefit of these taxpayers? The city says it's broke. The city says what? It's broke. It's broke. The city always says it's broke. That's why it's, it's the most mismanaged city probably in America because of decisions like this. If they continue to make these decisions, they will be broke. If they continue not to settle cases when they're responsible, they will be broke. What do you think the $131 million is an appropriate amount? How do you think the city can pay that or withstand that? Well, listen, it, it's, it's an appropriate amount for 15 years of what's happened with this land and what they've done to this person. Remember, the city chose not to pay. They chose this interest, which, as you'll see from the verdict, you know, it is the majority of this verdict is interest that the city thought it's a good idea to kick this can down the road. Well, kick the can long enough, the can's going to stop. The can stopped yesterday. But the interest is going to continue. So the fight, if the fight continues, and that's that's fine, they, they've lost every single place up and down to the appellate division of the Court of Appeals. The fight continues, the interest continues, and the money continues. And they still have not come to the table and offered Sinclair Haberman anything which is the height of arrogance for a public official. You said that politics is holding up the building of this, the construction of this building. What do people on the political side and the other side want to do with the land? What plans do they have for it? 
that was no, the, they don't own their vision. Land. No, no. The city doesn't own this land. Sinclair Haberman and Bel Air Buildings, which is his company, own this land. The city can't do anything. They want, oh, what do these people in this building want? They want it to be made vacant so that the people who bought this, knowing that these buildings would be built, they like the view. They've testified to that. That's what cost them $23 million uh, for, for their actions in this. But they paid because they were responsible, came to the table, and paid. You think this guy bankrupt the city? I can't imagine why it would bankrupt the city. Um, you know, the city's going to have to do what the city has to do here to try to resolve this in various different ways. Um, I'm sure someone in this city who's controlling it now is going to take a long, hard look at this and figure this out. And I hope that happens. We really do hope that happens. Because the last thing in the world that Sinclair Haberman wants to do is bankrupt the city that he loves, the city he grew up, the city he pays, spends his summers with, the city where his family lives. You know, that he loves this place more than anybody who's ever lived here. And he's shown that. He's shown that over the last 31 years by trying to resolve this case without the taxpayers paying one Dollar. And the city chose not to do that. Any further questions? Thank you. All right, so thank you. Do you want a picture of this? Yeah, can you just put it against the wall there? Against the fence? Real quick, just my background. Can you explain Xander's role in this? Which, which sure. were they? So there were two cases. One case involved Xander, which is this building here. And Xander came up with some crazy ideas that. They own this land because they used it for parking because Sinclair Haberman allowed them to use it for parking. What happened there was they then bring a case saying they owned it what's called adverse possession. We took it over. Okay. That case lasted until 2010 when Judge Lamarcker in the Supreme Court said, no, you don't own it. You can't take someone's property. And then Sinclair Haberman sued them for malicious prosecution. And won that case in front of the jury last year, the case that I tried. Now, what shows you the man of Sinclair Haberman? Sinclair Haberman could have got millions of dollars personally from the people who live and own in this building. And he chose not to walk away from it, taking the settlement of the $23 million. And nothing from the people who might be harmed uh, in this building walked away from millions of dollars. So that's the kind of man that you're dealing with, not your typical developer. So Xander owns and operates the first city point of contact. Oh, yeah. Once, once you build it, then you can buy it, and then it turns over, and they have their own board of directors. Yes. You said he just wants to build this because he's, he's, he cares about the beauty and the people of the city? Well, that's the project. He came out of school. This was his first project. Okay. His dad and, and, and him got together. And this was going to be his project. And that, if you recall at the time, in the mid-80s, Long Beach was in bad, bad shape. And he was going to bring Long Beach back. And the people who were in power at that time wanted him to bring Long Beach back. And he did do that. And that's why they said, gave him the variances. They put this project together. And then Long Beach started to turn. And when Long Beach turned to the benefit of Long Beach, then certain people didn't want buildings to be built, and that's when this whole problem really started. You make it sound altruistic, like he's just doing this to beautify Long Beach. Why doesn't he build a park here instead? No one will be opposed to that. Or is it about profit for the building? It's obviously... What's that obviously, he's in the business. Yeah. He's not in the business of building uh, buildings and losing money. He's not in the debt business. He's a developer. That's what he does. Right, but it's about profit. It's not about him beautifying Look, Long Beach. across the street. Anybody could do that. Okay. If you look at the project and you did your, you do your homework, you'll see what this place would look like. And, and it would be, it would have raised Long Beach's level to where everybody from the city of New York would have wanted to move out here and live here and commute to their job. So, barring the latest uh, legal challenges, does he have the building permits and the variances needed to start construction once allowed? So, what the city did. Um, in 2000, was they reinstated the permit to drive piles 
to a now deceased contractor in a, in a company that is no longer exists. So he does not have the permit for seven to start building. What company was that? Pardon me? What company was that? You know, uh, I don't remember the name. It starts with a D. Okay. Thank you. So he, he still has to go through the building permit process again? Well, he has the variance. Okay. He has a permit. He just has to get it. He's got to conform now. Remember, Hurricane Sandy's got to conform to different requirements. It's going to have to lift it a little bit off the ground uh, as well. Okay. Okay? Thanks, Chris. I'll be in time, guys. Okay. Thanks, Chris. 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 Okay.